live from Turkey. And for more on the unfolding situation, I'm joined now by Joshua Walker, who used to work in the U.S. Embassy in Ankara and is now a fellow at the German Marshall Fund. Um, Joshua Walker, thanks for being with us. Just how surprised are you by what's happened by this attempted or indeed even, we don't know, successful military coup in Turkey? I guess nothing in Turkey surprises me at this point in time, but I am surprised uh, at the timing of this. You know, this in many ways was a 1990s Turkey that we're used to in terms of having coups. Uh, unfortunately, clearly this is still a problem. The question, and you just talked to a caller in Turkey about this, is it a coup or is it a coup attempt? And I think the definition will be de determined who actually is able to come out on top of this scrum at this point. Because President Erdogan has talked about this being a faction within the military. How factionalized is Turkey's military? I think just like certain parts of the country, it's very polarized. And I think what the caller discussed and what we've known in terms of Turkey's military is that they, in some ways, have been broken down into different factions. And I think if the reports are correct, that the top uh, military leaders have been taken hostage. Uh, there has been kind of an agreement between the AKP and the military. So this would be outside of the norm. Therefore, it would have to be a lower level. This is not the generals uh, creating a coup. This is like in the 1960s when the colonels and below created a coup in, in belief of their national interest. But is the military a firm believer in Kemal Ataturk and the foundation of a modern secular Turkey? Are those their values? Absolutely. I mean, they are the defenders uh, of kind of Kemalism and Ataturk and his legacy. The question is, as the military has evolved, just like Turkey's evolved over time, would the military go outside of its barracks in terms of something that many in the world would say is delegitimate to kind of overturn a democratic institutional process, even if institutions are weak? I think that propaganda war, that war that we're currently seeing being Wage. We hear the president on TV right now. We see the ministers going out there. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out because right now the military has put out a statement through the TRT but hasn't said very much. We don't know who the face of the opposition is at this point in time. The pictures that we have from Turkey are showing that that bridge over the Bosphorus in Istanbul is now closed. It's really symbolic, isn't it, of Turkey's role as a bridge between Europe and between Asia. Just how threatening is this to global security at this worrying time, the fact that Turkey is undergoing a coup? I would actually argue this is even more uh, threatening and, and dangerous than a military or a terrorist attack, as we've seen the last time we talked. It was about the Istanbul airport attack. Now, all the airports are closed. The two bridges that go between Asia and Europe are closed. If there's instability of this type where Turkey has to focus inwardly, we can't even begin to talk about the crisis in Syria or Iraq, the places that we need Turkey as a critical NATO ally to help, not just the United States, but the entire world community creates stability and economic progress. What would it be that a faction within the military so objects to in President Erdogan and his government? I think there's been a frustration that they cannot beat him uh, through the polls. They've not been able to beat uh, President Erdogan uh, with the Democratic ballot box. Therefore, the only way to take him out as a major threat because of what they believe is a slow and creeping authoritarianism or Islamization that many have accused and saying we have to do this in the honor of our country and Kemalism. That statement that came out is classic 1990s. It sounds like a throwback to the past. That's why we still have to figure out what this is all about. In Turkey, nothing is ever as it seems, so we still have to wait for the details. The White House is monitoring the situation, but how alarmed are they going to be inside the White House by this development? I think the White House, the State Department, every agency that has connections to Turkey is alarmed right now, and they're probably uh, spending their Friday evenings into Saturday focused on this question because of how close and important of an ally Turkey is, not just in the fight against ISIL. I mean, there's a big conference in the White House next week. The Turkish foreign minister supposed to be here. Will he be able to travel because all the airports are closed? Who will who emerge as the kind of legitimate government of Turkey? Presumably, if the coup is successful, Turkey's military wants to be a strong partner in NATO. Does it even want an increased role in the fight against Islamic State? Did it have a quarrel with President Erdogan there over him being accused of turning really a blind eye to ISIS going across the border into Syria? I mean, the dangerous part about this is there are arguments you can make and say, well, actually, the Turkish military during the Cold War was actually America and the West's strongest ally. Erdogan and, and kind of democratic Turkey has been difficult to deal with. But I think before we can even get to those arguments, we need to focus on our values and principles. And military coups are not part of that value and principle. Unfortunately, they have been in the Middle East. Turkey traditionally has been considered part of Europe. And so that discussion between the bridge that we talked about going from Asia to Europe, are we going to treat it like another Middle Eastern uh, country or is it a European democracy? If this happened in the western heart of Europe, what would our response be and how do we judge ourselves accordingly? President Erdogan has called for people to protest against the attempted coup attempt to go onto the streets. I mean, how popular is he? Would you expect that people would heed that call? Absolutely. President Erdogan is extremely 
popular. He's very polarizing as well, but when he calls out his legions of supporters, this could get ugly very quickly in the, in the sense that his supporters in certain, certain pockets of the city, not just in Istanbul, but in the heart of, of Ankara and the hearts of Anatolia, will come out and try to resist a civil arrest or whatever else it takes. And particularly if the military is not unified in this attempt, if there is a mutiny within the ranks, this is going to make it even more difficult to see how either Erdogan or the military attempt is able to, to be successful and a lot of lives will be lost in the meantime. And Joshua, just how much is at stake here tonight? I mean, I think that this is probably the most uh, critical moment of the last decade for Turkish, not only democracy, but also where we are in the global scale of kind of countries that are on the brink, countries that we always were thought were on our side and are always with us. This is, is, a, is a turning point in a very significant way. We talked about Brexit and the EU and its decision. This is another moment like that that Europe is going to have to face and the transatlantic community has to face together. And for you personally, as someone who's lived in Turkey, this must be very upsetting, just briefly. It is. And when you look at the pictures coming out of there, it's bring back bad memories in terms of tanks and other areas. At the same time, the number of terrorist attacks that have been hitting Turkey day after day after week, it's going to be important to see how this plays out. Joshua Walker, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Well, that